So CBDCs are coming and there's no escape and it's all about total control. Now, there's a lot of people out there saying that we should resist a CBDC or central bank digital currency and it's very bad for our personal privacy and extreme monetary control will be implemented the moment it comes. But we need to understand that at the end of the day, the max we can do is to prepare ourselves for this eventuality. The momentum of history, everything is leading up to the rise of CBDCs. And just recently, Unicoin was unveiled as a possible universal CBDC or monetary unit. And its purpose seems to be very benign, doesn't it? Enforce banking regulations and protect the international banking system. Now, what this means is that the power of your money is going to be centralized in a central government, right? Maybe it's centralized by the IMF, by the World Bank, or by the Federal Reserve, but it is going to happen. And it's so bad that even in the United States, we have senators, we have governors trying to block it. Ted Cruz is trying to block it with a bill, calling it a surveillance tool in Texas. And the DeSantis has just banned CBDCs in Florida. And listen to what the DeSantis has to say. This is something that will be a massive transfer of power from individual consumers to a central authority. So just imagine the central authority being the Federal Reserve. You have the power to actually look through all of your transactions. So let's say you take a weekend to Las Vegas, you spend a ton of money, maybe $5,000 or $10,000, rolling in at the roulette table, and suddenly the government says, hey, this is not how a well-mannered or well-being citizen should be. And then they tax you on it. So let's understand that money is actually the ultimate form of control. If you can control or influence people on where they spend their money, how much they can spend it, or if they can even spend it at all, you basically control their entire lives. And there are a lot of different kinds of money that can be controlled, right? Different levels of control. And Michael Saylor said it quite bad. CBDCs provides the ultimate control and oversight into everything. For example, let's take a look at cash versus central bank digital currencies, right? At least with cash, even though it is losing value, you can still do a lot of anonymous transactions. You can take $1,000, you can buy whatever you want with it. But by CBDCs, you can't really make any transactions that is transparent. I mean, not transparent. They'll be able to look through every single thing that you buy. And this situation is going global. Countries, they are launching their CBDCs and there are no escaping this eventuality. Now, out of 114 countries, 11 have launched them and the additional 50 are already under development or in the pilot stage as well. And what I fear is that we are moving towards that Orwellian future where we will be eventually influenced on how we use our money. But in order for CBDCs to come to existence, we need a powerful crisis for this adoption to happen. It has to be an earth-shattering crisis that affects our confidence in the financial system. Now, Churchill had a powerful quote towards the end of World War II when they were forming the United Nations. Never let a good crisis go to waste. And this is why the banking crisis is the ultimate Trojan horse for CBDC launch. Now, the CBDCs, they were experimented on in various countries from China all the way to Nigeria. But let us focus on Nigeria because the experiment there actually failed. And that shows that you can't legislate behavior just like that. But get this, the Nigerian government actually implemented cash withdrawals up to $225 a week to drain cash away from the system. They tried very draconian measures in order to get people to embrace CBDCs, but it didn't work and the people on the ground, they protested. And this is why you need a bigger and more systemic crisis. And welcome to the 2023 banking crisis. So firstly, let's underscore what went wrong with the banking crisis, right? In the past, back in the 2020 and 2008, we had the Federal Reserve printing too much money. And what did that lead to? That led to inflation crisis. And now we have a big solvency crisis at the Federal Reserve. They are jacking up the cost of money. They are raising rates. And what does this do? It drains money away from the system. And this is why we are starting to see all the banks starting to collapse. But people like you and me, the average Joe out there, we don't really care that the banks go under. What we care about is our deposits. Are our deposits safe? Now, Yedan has mentioned time and time again how she can't guarantee all banking deposits. And this is where central banks, the CBDCs can come in and say, hey, if you use our coins, we will guarantee your deposits. And check out this headline, US studies ways to ensure all bank deposits if crisis grows. And with a centralized ledger or CBDCs, right, central banks, they can effectively back up 100% of deposits and make everyone insured. So just imagine if 100% of deposits are now all insured, this will be the ultimate incentive. So it doesn't matter if you have a million dollars, 
$10,000 or quarter million, whether it's uninsured or insured, will all be protected by the government through CBDCs. They can simply print out all this money, right? They don't even have to print out. They can just simply type it into a computer and you're made whole. Now, this is truly nightmare fuel. And just imagine the insane control over monetary policy they can have. And here's a statement from the Bank of International Settlements that we need to understand, that we need to consider. And I quote, We don't know who's using a $100 bill today. We don't know who's using a 1,000 peso bill today. The key difference with the CBDC is the central bank who have absolute control on the rules and regulations that will determine the use of central bank money. And also, we will have the technology to enforce that. And what it means is that it allows for negative interest rates and programmable money. Now, both of it is truly nightmarish. So let's talk about negative interest rates first. It's the simplest example of them all to understand. Now, interest rates is nothing more than the cost of borrowing money. And with the CBDCs, the government, the central banks, they can actually spur spending throughout the nation. All they need to do is to program money to not have a zero interest rate, but to have a negative interest rate. So if you have money in the bank, you are forced in a way to just spend it or you'll get eroded away naturally, right? You'll lose purchasing power. You'll actually lose absolute value. And what does this do? It will spur spending throughout the country, throughout the world. And it could cause even more market bubbles because people, they'll be so desperate to spend their money. They'll buy absolutely almost everything. They'll speculate in the stock market. They'll speculate in precious metals. And yeah, they're going to speculate in property as well. Now, the second component of CBDCs is something that scares me even more, which is programmable money. And that's simply limiting what you can buy and how much you can buy as well. For example, alcohol, gambling, all these can be grouped together as undesirable activities. So let's say you have $100, $100 worth of CBDCs, maybe the central bank say, hey, you can only spend 10% or 20% on all these type of activities. And this can even extend to how you can invest. For example, if they want to demonize gold, they want to demonize cryptocurrencies, they can say, hey, of your investing budget or how much budget in a month you have, you can only spend 1%, 2%, 5% on all these stores of value, right? Gold or crypto. And the rest, there's no limits if you want to invest into the stock market to really prop up the markets. But things can get even more wackier. Now, just imagine how CBDCs can essentially profile you and force you to comply with social issues or the social flavor of the week, right? And guess what? There's no better example than Biden's rule to punish home buyers with good credit. And it's truly madness. Now, if you have a high credit score and 680 is a good credit score, you have to pay more. And we're talking about real money. And this could be $100 a month more. And why is this happening? Basically, if you're richer, you have more disposable income, you might be slapped with higher fees or tax on purchases. And why? Maybe you want to subsidize more irresponsible borrowers. And this is very dangerous. It's basically the Robin Hood plan once again, which will screw up the economy and cause another housing crisis in this example. So now apply this to other issues. If they can track your money, they can make sure you adhere to social agendas like climate change and green energy. And you're talking about additional taxes or higher interest rates for higher carbon footprint individuals or, you know, all those tax write-offs for those who go green. Now, this is highly possible and it's currently being experimented on right now. And check this out. Mastercard unveils new carbon calculator tool for banks globally as consumer passion for the environment grows. And here's how this works. The carbon calculator informs consumers about the carbon footprint of their purchases so that they can make more mindful spending decisions and contribute to forest restoration. Now apply that to CBDCs tracking the rest of your purchases. Sounds very dystopian, doesn't it? And I have to say there's really no escaping this. There's no escaping the system. Because the majority of people will eventually embrace, they will accept the CBDCs and we will be using them eventually. And I got two reasons for this, stimulus checks and accessing the Fed funds rate. Now, stimulus checks is very simple. Let's say we enter another financial crisis and the government decides to give stimulus checks through CBDCs. The free money, the free thousands of dollars is only accessible through CBDCs. Do you think the millions of people out there will not try to get a digital wallet to access all this free stimulus money? Of course they will. And the second reason is accessing the Fed funds rate. Banks today can simply go to the Federal Reserve and get a return of 5% on their money, but you can't. 
And for CBDCs, the incentive here is really easy. Let the man on the street, let you access central bank interest rates directly. You can now get 5% too. There's no middleman needed. Who is going to reject that? And because of this, there's only truly two ways you can hedge against this. And both of them truly have risk. Let's talk about Bitcoin first. Yes, it is decentralized digital money. But this poses a big threat to the powers that be. They don't really like digital currencies. And it allows for the instant movement of money cross-border. And let's say you're a government, you won't like that. And that's an example why China actually banned CBDCs as well. They have a lot of capital controls and they don't really like it if you move a million dollars, 10 million dollars, or let's say $100 million away from the country because China has a $50,000 limit transfer per year, $50,000 US dollars. And this is why Bitcoin is going to be the great enemy of digital currencies. And listen to this, Ray Dalio believes that the government will likely outlaw or regulate away Bitcoin. And they can legislate Bitcoin away and program the CBDCs if everyone is using it in such a way that it can't be used in crypto exchanges. Now, over 90% of cryptocurrencies are transacted in centralized exchanges, meaning CBDCs can shut them down. All the government needs to do is to write a single line of code that prevents CBDCs from transacting with all decentralized exchanges. So you can't buy your cryptocurrencies with CBDCs, and then you also can't sell them in order to get back the CBDCs. Now, you can think that gold might be a better hedge because of two reasons, and I agree with it. Now, firstly, it exists in a physical realm, so it can't be tracked down like cryptos. And over 65% of gold has industrial and commercial users, including jewelry and you know being used in semiconductors, besides being a, just a store of value. And that's very important. But gold is not immune. You can't really travel around the world carrying a million dollars of gold around the airports. It's mainly a local store of value and physical money. You can't transport billions of dollars, millions of dollars, or even hundreds of thousands of dollars across the world with gold easily, right? You have to register them and then you'll raise a lot of red flags. So right now, what do you have? You have cryptocurrencies that can be regulated away. You have gold that you can't really move around in huge quantities. And this is why you got to diversify. And global adoption is coming. There's truly no escaping the matrix, guys. It is pointless to resist because the majority of people will adopt it at one point or another. And we are just a small minority in this equation. 20% of people are actually aware of this problem and only 20% of the 20% will take action. So in actuality, only 4% or likely even less will be prepared at the end of the day. And even the Federal Reserve, they are speaking out against CBDCs, which is actually very surprising considering they have the most to benefit. And this is what Jerome Powell, the Fed chair, has to say. We would not want a world in which the government sees in real time every money transfer that anyone makes with the CBDCs. So the best we can do now is to simply hedge ourselves and prepare with free money both in the physical and the digital realm, guys. But hey, at least in the future, there might be discounts on bark and insect protein with our CBDCs. So we get a discount for our daily dose of protein there. Apparently, it seems that we need to eat insects to save the planet and reduce climate change. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you prepared for the rise of CBDCs? Will they use this banking crisis as the ultimate excuse, as the ultimate Trojan horse? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.